So I have something to admit to you guys. I've not been entirely truthful in my last few videos. Let me show you what I mean. Yep, yeah, I've been using a green screen. There's actually nothing left in this house whatsoever. And I've been really struggling to do videos recently, but there are a few things that I left behind. I left all of my Game Boy collection in the boxes over there. But as well as all my Game Boy games, I also decided to leave behind all of the Game Gear games as well. And that is because when I got the analog pocket recently, I also got the Game Gear adapter. So in this video, I'm going to show you what the Game Gear adapter can do. And I don't have that many Game Gear games. I only actually have 11. So I'm going to play through each of them and give you my first impressions because this is actually the first time that I've properly sat down and actually tried Game Gear games myself. And I kind of have mixed feelings about them, but first of all, let me show you what exactly the Game Gear adapter can do and answer the question, is it worth getting if you've got an analog pocket or if you're thinking of getting one in the future? Let's get started. So the Game Gear adapter for the analog pocket is $29 and is it worth it? I'd say yes. If you saw my video review on the analog pocket itself, you'll know that it is the perfect way of playing Game Boy games. And I feel like with this adapter, it is a really good alternative to playing on the original Game Gear or even on a modded Game Gear as well. So let me show you what this adapter can actually do. So let's first start by taking a look at the accessory box itself. And of course, just like everything else from analog, the production values are just incredible. And here's a look at the adapter itself. Really nice build quality here. I also love this transparent plastic design. And the great thing about this as well is the fact that none of the circuitry is actually exposed, so it should last a really long time as well. And as you can see, the cartridges fit in really nice and snug. They don't move around whatsoever. It's actually even more secure than just putting the Game Boy game in the back of the pocket, honestly. And I think it looks really cool too. As you can see, it fits really nicely. It doesn't really wobble around in there, unfortunately. And this can't really be helped, but the games do stick out the top just a little bit. And it may look a little bit weird, but at least you get to play these games on a really nice handheld with a really nice screen. The first thing that's immediately apparent is just how good the screen looks, just like the Game Boy games as well. It really did blow my mind as soon as I turned these on. I've only ever experienced an original Game Gear before. I've never even tried a modded one. So going from that terrible screen to something like this was honestly a mind blowing experience. So there's three different display options when you load up the settings in here. You have analog, GG, which is Analog's preferred way of playing. This is basically their custom made version of the Game Gear, made to look as good as possible on their own screen. Next you have Original GG, which tries to replicate how the screen might have looked on an original Game Gear. It does a great job with the colours and also with the scan lines, which I think look absolutely fantastic. But of course, even this mode looks a million times better than the original Game Gear. And then, my favourite of the three, you have one called GG Plus, which is basically Analog's way of saying this is kind of the original Game Gear screen, just improved and modernised, and I think that is my favourite of the three. Of course, you've also got the other options like resizing the screen and moving it around, and this is how the original Game Gear resolution looks. So you can see just how many more pixels there are on the Analog Pocket screen compared to the original Game Gear. You also get Aspect Fit and Aspect 4x3. Aspect Fit is quite interesting because it actually fills the screen from top to bottom. The original Game Gear had a kind of widescreen look to it compared to the Game Boy's more square appearance. So you can actually stretch it to make it look kind of like a Game Boy Color game, honestly. And for some games, it actually looks quite good. Whereas with other games, you can tell that they're kind of stretched, but Playing Wonder Boy here, it actually improves the graphics, I would say, because on the original Game Gear, they do look kind of squashed to fit that aspect ratio compared to what was possible on the Sega Master System. So actually playing that one in full screen mode is actually my preferred way of playing. And I also found that through playing some of the other games, it kind of depends on the game as to which one I prefer. And of course, you can also adjust the sharpness, which is how sharp the pixels are. I like to leave this on full. I really like the sharp, clear pixels. And the other thing you can change on there as well is the saturation. So if you for some reason want it to look black and white like a Game Boy game, you do have that option. I prefer to have this somewhere in between because I think if it's too saturated, it kind of looks a little bit unnatural. And that's pretty much everything to do with the settings of the system. So now let's take a look at the 11 games that I've got for the system, starting with the first one, which is Shinobi for the Game Gear. 
And I've been told on Twitter that this isn't actually a port of the Master System Shinobi game. This is actually a completely unique game made just for the Game Gear. And for the few minutes that I played it for this video, I have to say that it is really, really fun. And I can definitely see myself going back and playing some more of this one in the future. I'm actually going away for work tomorrow and I'm going to take the Game Gear adapter on the train with me. And one of the games that I'm going to take with me is this Shinobi game here. Let me know whether you've played it down in the comments below and I will definitely share my thoughts on what I thought about the game when I play it a little bit more. For my first impressions though, the game seems extremely challenging but also really fun to play. The controls feel great so I can't wait to play this one some more and I'll definitely come back here and share my thoughts after I've given it a proper play. Hey so here I am in the hotel room and on the train on the way up here I did play it and I got quite far into the game actually. I did about two or three levels on there and I really really enjoyed it. So I definitely want to say that Shinobi for the Game Gear is one of the best Game Gear games that I've played so far and I definitely recommend you try and pick yourselves up a copy if you're interested and just on a side note it is now seven o'clock on thursday and i've literally only just started editing this video because unfortunately i didn't actually have any of the files on my laptop i moved all the wrong things off so i had to get it all uploaded to the cloud and then download it over the really slow hotel wi-fi so Thankfully, I've just about managed to make this video possible for you all to watch today. So I really hope you appreciate this last minute attempt for a video. Now on to game number two. And next up is Shinobi 2 for the Game Gear, which is another completely original game for the system. I was really excited to try this one. Unlike Shinobi 1, I've never actually played this one at all on the Game Gear, so I was really excited to boot this one up. And I've actually had a few people on Twitter telling me that this is quite possibly the best game on the system. So just like the first game, I'm going to take this one with me while I'm traveling for work. And I'm definitely going to give this one a proper play as well. From first impressions though, this one seems even more challenging than the first game, so I think I've I've definitely got my work cut out for me if I want to actually get anywhere in this game. I'm actually going to try and complete it. I don't know whether that's going to be possible or not. But just like the first one, I can definitely see myself having a lot of fun playing this one. The third game is Echo the Dolphin, and if I'm completely honest, I've never been the biggest fan of Echo. But one thing that always stood out to me about this series was the fantastic graphics, and I have to say that they've translated extremely well onto the Game Gear. For an 8-bit console, it really does look very nice, especially with the scan lines turned on on the analog pocket. Unfortunately, just like the regular Echo the Dolphin game, I also had no idea what I was supposed to do at all. I was swimming around, I was using my sonar to try and talk to all of the different dolphins in the area and just nothing happened, I was just going around in circles. So maybe I'll give this one a bit more of a fair chance in the future, but for now I can say that it controls really well, it looks really nice, but just like any of the other games in the series I have no clue what I'm supposed to do. Next is another game that's exclusive to the system. This one is called Waddy Pop, and I was quite surprised by this one. It actually turned out to be a breakout style game, and I do love those style of games. Although, of course, it's a really simple concept, this one does seem really fun. It also seems quite fast as well, which I always enjoy with these arcade style experiences. And honestly, if I was to put this and Alleyway for the Game Boy next to each other, I might actually choose this over Alleyway, just because it's got a little bit more personality to it. But there's not really that much more to say. It really is just a standard, typical breakout style game with a few neat little interesting power-ups and kind of bland visuals, honestly. I think the Game Gear could do a lot better. Now, next up is Chuck Rock, a game that I actually really enjoy on the Mega Drive, so I was quite interested to see how this one stacks up on the Game Gear. Unfortunately, I have to say that I'm a little bit disappointed by this. It runs at a really slow frame rate and the controls don't really seem that responsive. Also, the level designs from what I've played so far seemed a little bit bland and simple. You could basically just ignore all the enemies and just keep running to the side with only really needing to jump every now and then. Also, I don't really like how close you need to be to the enemies in order to attack them. Uh, I really think there's a lot better games on the system than this one. But let me know if you've enjoyed this game. I know that someone on my Twitter actually replied and said they'd got all the way up to the final boss and then they encountered a game-breaking glitch which actually froze the game and they actually couldn't complete it after getting that far into the game. So I really did feel sorry for them. And that's also kind of put me off trying to play this one in case the same thing happens to me. Sonic 2 next, and I'm pretty sure that everyone watching this video knows what the Game Gear and Master System version of Sonic 2 is. But if you don't, it's a completely different game to the Mega Drive Sonic 2, and in my opinion, a lot worse. Unlike the first game that came out on the Master System and Game Gear, which I actually think is more fun to play and has a better soundtrack than the Mega Drive game. This one, on the other hand, though, this one feels really weird. For, for 
one thing, you start the game in an underground cave, and that just feels wrong for a Sonic game. And second of all, it introduced a few weird mechanics like the hand glider, which don't really feel that good. Plus, the controls in these 8-bit Sonic games just feel a little bit stiff and wonky when compared to the Mega Drive. And playing Sonic 2 without Spin Dash is also a little bit weird as well. Still a fun game though, and I really do love Sega's platformers, so you can't really go too far wrong with the Sonic games. I would love to try and get some of the later Sonic games for the Game Gear in the future as well, because they do seem a lot more interesting. I'd also love to play the Tales Adventure game on there too. And like I'm saying about picking these games up, let me know down in the comments below if there's any Game Gear games that you would recommend me to buy, because I am looking at expanding my Game Gear collection in the future. It's kind of a system that I'd completely passed by until now, and thanks to this analog pocket adapter, I'm really excited to try out some more games for it. Now Fantasy Zone next, and the first thing that I thought when I booted this game up was just how good the graphics look. They really do look incredible for the Game Gear. The amount of detail that they managed to get in the backgrounds, and the incredible colour palette as well, it's just really really pleasing on the eye, especially with the scanline filter turned on on the analogue pocket itself. In terms of gameplay though, I've never really been a huge fan of the Fantasy Zone series. It was always a little bit slow and clunky, and I don't really like having to go around the area several times to pick up coins in order to go to a shop. I always prefer my shoot 'em ups a bit more fast paced. I would always prefer to play something like, let's say, Sagaya, which is also on the Master System, which is a much more fun game in my opinion. But I definitely give it credit for the incredible graphics though. Now, next up is Columns, which of course was Sega's answer to Tetris, and it's just as much fun here as anywhere else, although this version is incredibly basic and the graphics really don't really do the game any favours. It all looks very, very generic, very basic, with really plain static backgrounds. But I suppose when you compare it to the original Game Boy Tetris, that one didn't really look that good either, and both of them have great gameplay. It is a really good game, but maybe I'm a little bit spoiled because the Columns game that I played the most was the one on the Game Boy Advance, and that has so many different single player modes and multiplayer battle things and stuff, and it has really nice anime aesthetics, whereas this one is incredibly stripped back compared to that. But again, you would kind of expect that being the first game in the series. So I can't really knock the game for what it is, I really do enjoy it. And unfortunately, this one here, which was supposed to be Donald Duck, I couldn't actually get this one to work, which was the only game in my collection that I couldn't get to work on this. I did try cleaning the cartridge, I tried blowing the cartridge, I know you shouldn't do that, but I did try that anyway. But no matter what I did, I just couldn't get it to go onto the title screen, so we'll have to pass on this one for now. Although I have played the Master System game, and I do really enjoy that one. And this is actually a really interesting game, and probably saving the best one till last actually. This one is called Popils or Poplis and it's a really really interesting puzzle game and I also found out recently that it's also an exclusive for the Game Gear as well. And it took me a little bit of time to get my head around what was going on in this game but once it clicked I actually really enjoyed this and I actually spent about half an hour playing this after I'd actually finished recording. It was that fun so I'm definitely going to go back and play more of this one. Let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of it before. It is a really really fun game and it's kind of a shame that Sega or I think Tengen who made this one never really did anything else with it in the future as far as I know there's no sequel there's no follow-up it's just this one Game Gear game but I'm really happy to have found a hidden gem for the system already in my small collection so let me know if there's any other hidden puzzle gems like this one and I will definitely look at collecting some more in the future. Unfortunately there are a few little features missing that I would like to have seen included including the option to be able to swap the A and B buttons around just like you could on the original Game Boy games because I do prefer holding it in that diagonal position rather than the opposite way around. Apart from that though, they do play really well and I'm really excited for the first time ever really to actually be able to play these games properly because my Game Gear died a few years ago thanks to corroded capacitors and I've never actually got a replacement since then and the screen was also failing too. And I also want to know, anyone who's watching, if you're a fan of Game Gear, what games should I pick up because I'm really looking into getting into the system more and I also want to know which of these games that I already own for the system should I put some more time into as well. So it was a little bit difficult for me to actually play and record these games because of course I haven't got the dock for the analog pocket yet so I had to play it in handheld and it was really aching my arms after a while. I also had to look through the preview on the camera to try and play these games so there was a little bit of lag and when you're looking at this gameplay don't worry I'm not that 
that bad at playing games as it seems in this video. And I have been back and played some of them after recording this video as well. So there we go, that was a quick look at the Game Gear adapter for the Analog Pocket and a look at all of the games that I own for the system so far. Let me know what you thought about this video down in the comments below. Check out my Discord and Patreon as well. And if you want to see my full review of the Analog Pocket, click the video up here. Hopefully I won't be in this empty room much longer. Fingers crossed I'm moving house very soon. And I really hope I am because I'm kind of running out of videos to do as well. So thank you for sticking with me through this kind of awkward time on the channel. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you very soon for the next video. Goodbye.